there are four rivers in Eden. In the beginning, when the world was young and resonated with divine whispers, a sanctuary of unparalleled beauty and tranquility emerged the Garden of Eden. Genesis, the inaugural book of the Bible, unveils this perfect garden where the first breaths of humanity were drawn by Adam and Eve, shaped by the hands of God. Within its confines, two extraordinary trees, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil, stood as testaments to divine order and decree. The Garden of Eden was more than mere earth. It mirrored God's flawless plan and served as an earthly reflection of heaven itself. This sanctuary was not just a dwelling place, but also a source of life giving waters, with four rivers, Pishon, Jehan, Tigris, and Euphrates flowing through, nourishing the garden and beyond. Each river bore a unique identity, weaving its own story and contributing to the unfolding narrative of early human history. The rivers mentioned in the Bible, particularly in the book of Genesis, hold significant symbolism and historical importance. The rivers Pishon, Jehan, Tigris, Hittical, and Euphrates are often interpreted in various ways by scholars and theologians. Pishon is described as flowing through the land of Havilah, which is associated with wealth and abundance due to its mentioned resources of gold, bidium, and onyx stone. Some interpretations suggest that Havilah represents a paradise or a blessed land, emphasizing God's provision for humanity. Jihan is linked to the land of Cush, which is believed to be located in the region of modern-day Ethiopia or Sudan. The river's importance in sustaining life in this area highlights its significance as a source of nourishment and livelihood for the people dwelling there. Tigris, also referred to as Hittical in some translations, is situated east of Assyria. This river has witnessed the ebb and flow of civilizations throughout history, serving as a witness to the rise and fall of empires in the ancient Near East. Euphrates, one of the most well-known rivers in the region, is mentioned numerous times in the Bible and holds immense historical and cultural significance. It served as a natural border and a vital waterway for trade and transportation, contributing to the development of civilizations such as Sumer, Babylon, and Assyria. In biblical prophecy, particularly in the book of Revelation, the Euphrates River holds significant symbolism. It is mentioned several times throughout the Bible as a boundary marker and a prominent geographical feature in the ancient Near East. In Revelation 16, 12, it is specifically mentioned as part of the events leading up to the final battle between good and evil, often referred to as the Battle of Armageddon. The drying up of the Euphrates is seen as a supernatural event signaling the culmination of end times events. This drying up is believed to facilitate the gathering of nations for the Battle of Armageddon, as mentioned in Revelation 16, 12, 16. The exact nature of how this drying up will occur is open to interpretation, with some seeing it as a literal drying up of the river and others interpreting it symbolically as the removal of obstacles or the withdrawal of support. The rise of the Antichrist is intricately linked to this event, as it is believed that the drying up of the Euphrates will pave the way for the Antichrist to gather his forces and establish his reign of deception and tyranny. This interpretation is based on various passages in the Bible that speak of the Antichrist's rise to power and his role in the end times scenario. While uncertainties surround the exact location of the Garden of Eden due to geological changes post Noah's flood, 
The rivers, especially the Tigris and Euphrates, are considered integral to the biblical narrative. The Garden of Eden, with its rivers, becomes a metaphor for the interconnectedness of God's creation, emphasizing the unity and diversity inherent in all living things. Post-Eden, as Adam and Eve faced the challenges of a world outside paradise, the rivers continued to flow, symbolizing God's ongoing grace and presence. The rivers acted as a geographical and symbolic connection to Eden, reaching out to corners of the earth despite humanity's expulsion. In Psalm 1, 3, the metaphor of a tree planted by streams of water is used to describe the righteous man. This imagery emphasizes the continual source of nourishment and life that comes from being connected to God, much like the rivers from Eden. These rivers, once lifelines for the garden, evolved into conduits of grace, mirroring the ongoing flow of God's love toward humanity. In the midst of uncertainty and challenges, the rivers from Eden serve as a reminder that God's grace, like flowing water, sustains and nurtures, offering hope and renewal. As Psalm 46, 4 suggests, there is a river whose streams make the city of God happy a river that flows from the throne of God, providing perpetual joy and life. As we reflect on the rivers of Eden, let us be mindful of the profound connection between the physical and the spiritual. The rivers, with their individual mysteries and purposes, convey a narrative of diversity and unity, echoing the fundamental truth that from one source, many can emerge. These rivers, born from a singular divine origin, speak to the intricate tapestry of creation. In conclusion, the four rivers of Eden, with their rich symbolism and historical significance, invite us to delve into the depths of biblical narratives. They serve as conduits that connect the earthly with the divine, echoing the eternal truth that from unity comes diversity and from the Creator flows life in its myriad forms. May the rivers of Eden continue to whisper the sacred truth that, despite the challenges of life, God's grace remains an ever-flowing river, sustaining and nourishing the world. If you found this video enjoyable, please consider liking and sharing it. Additionally, subscribing to this channel will ensure that you receive more updates in the future. Thank you.